Well, hello, everybody. I greet you in Jesus' name. Um, my name is Nehemiah, and um, we're going to get into a new series of, our te of teaching today. For those of you that were with us the last several weeks, we have been talking about prayer and uh, different aspects of prayer, and God has just helped us, um, hopefully, to be better prayer warriors. We're, uh, but the, the new series is going to be entitled Loving God. Loving God. Um, much is said about God loving us, but do you know that we're supposed to love God? And the key verse of our teachings each uh, for the next few weeks, or however long it takes us, is um, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. But actually, I'm going to read from verse 34, just so that you'll get um, full understanding or the context of the scripture. He says, "When well, now when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced his Sadducee, they gathered together. One of them, a lawyer, asked Jesus a question to test him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Right? And verse 37. And this is the key verse that we're going to be using for the next uh, few or several weeks uh, as how the Lord leads us. Verse 37. And Jesus replied to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. See? Uh, notice it's a command. Um, but before we do, let us open up in prayer. Lord, let us begin with prayer. Father God, we come to thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy towards us. Lord, we thank you for your love, oh, your everlasting love. And Father, we ask that you will just help us, Lord, by your Holy Spirit as we go into these um, teachings now in regards to the commandment that you gave us, that is to love you. In the name of Jesus, give us understanding, O oh Lord. It's so vital that we understand, O oh God, your words. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Yeah, so uh, as I said before, we want to lay a foundation. Um, a foundation is being that this is the first week. And we wanna, I want to talk about God's love for us. You know, because it's a lot easier to love someone if you know that that person loves you. And God loves you. God loves me. Yeah, Jesus gave that command. He's, matter of fact, he said it's the greatest commandment. Matthew 22, 37. Um, well, 36 says, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said, reply to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Think of that. Think of that. But let us lay this foundation that, and that is that God love us. And then we can build on it. We, we, we will build on it the next few or several weeks that we're on this um, topic, we, we, we will really be building on the fact that God loves us. St. John 3 verse 16 says, um, and it is actually called the golden text of the New Testament, Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that Whosoever believe on him will not perish but have everlasting life. So that so you see that? He says, For God so loved the world. And you think of it, God loves us. He does. Throughout the scriptures, and I'm going to give you several today, we're going to see how God loved man. He loves us affectionately. And I looked up in the dictionary the word love. 
and there's a couple of meanings, but the one that stuck to me, that, that stayed with me is, um, it's an intense feeling of deep affection. Say it again, an intense feeling of deep affection. Um, an example would be, uh, babies fill parents with feelings of love. And if you have a child, I'm sure you'd understand that. Uh, you, you have a toddler or a newborn parent. There's a love. There's just something. Well, when you just look at that newborn, you have it is it, an intense feeling, especially if that's your child uh, of love. Uh, another one is a great interest and pleasure in something. For example, somebody may say, boy, I just, that, that person, he's always talking about basketball or sports. Why? Because he loves sports. See? He has a great, he or she has a great interest or pleasure in something. Somebody else may say, boy, I love cooking. Or I love swimming. I love biking. God loves you and he loves me. God has an intense feeling of deep affection for you. He does. He does. So let us read on. Let us get into this. Because if we understand, as I, as I alluded to earlier, it's a lot easier to love someone if you know that that person loves you. And I'll say this. There is nothing, no one's love can compare to the love that God has for you and I. A man falls in love with a woman and vice versa. A woman falls in love with a man. But that their love pales to the love of God. It does. Even a mother's love. You know, it's, uh, it's strong. Mother's love, I, I, I won't deny that. A mother's love for their child is intense and strong. But it pales. That mother's love pales to God's love. Remember, he's the creator. I was thinking earlier, if you make something, let's say you are a carpenter and you made a chair. And you look at the chair and say, you know, I don't like it. You have every right to just tear it apart, start all over again. It's you. You're the creator of it. Well, imagine God. He is the creator of all of us. And you remember in the garden when Adam and Eve sinned, it was God's love, God's desire for mankind. He didn't destroy him. I mean, he could have. He could have said, ah, oh, this, this is not working out. Let me just destroy it and start all over again. I mean, he's the creator. But he didn't. He didn't. And we just got, we just read John 3.16. 3, John 3.16. It's because God so loved the world. He so loved you. He so loved me that he sent his son to die. Think of that. Think of that. Because I don't, as we get into um, us loving God, I don't want you to ever question. Don't let the enemy, don't let the devil bring to you that God doesn't love you. If he does, you just tell him, you rebuke him, you rebuke that thought. Because you know it's not God's telling you that, it's the devil. Because God does love you. God does love you. Okay? So we read John 3, 16, another one is Romans 5 verse 8. It says, But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God didn't wait for us to become Christians or born again believers to love us. No. It was while we were in sin that he demonstrated his love for us. He loved us. And sent his son to die for us. So that's something that we should always hold dear to our heart. God loves you. God loves you. 
John 15 verse 13 says, greater love, this was Jesus talking to his disciples before he died. He said, greater love have no one than this, than a man laid down his life for his friends. And Jesus did it. Jeremiah 31 verse uh, 3 says, the Lord appeared to him from afar away. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have counted my, excuse me, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Think about that. God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. There's a song, an old song, um, it says, the love of God is greater far, is greater than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest stars. That's God's love. God love for you. God love for me. It's very powerful. Very powerful. And again, we're laying the foundation. When you build a house, you lay the foundation first. And then you build the house on top of that foundation. That foundation has to be strong or else when the wind blows, that house would be, it would not stand. Why? Because that foundation is not strong. We are, the, the, this foundation that we're building on is this fact that God loves you and God loves me. Don't ever forget it. Thus, 1 John 4 verse 8 says, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love and this is this is interesting God's very nature he's love the Bible says God is love God is love Galatians 2 verse 20 says I have been crucified with Christ this is Paul talking it is no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me and the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Where it says me, you can put your, you can say you. It's, I mean, I'm saying it's you. You know, God loves you. That the, the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith by faith in the Son of God who loved me or who loved you and gave himself for you. Praise the Lord. Praise God. First John 4 verse 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another for love is from, is from God. Right? And whosoever love has been born of God and know, knows God. 1 John 3, verse 1. I love this one. It says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world doesn't know us in that it did not know Him. But the first clause of that, first part of that verse is what I wanna, want us to um, think of. He says, see what kind of love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. Remember, at one time, we were enemies of God. Because remember, the scripture says, all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. We, we were at one time God's enemy. But God, as the scripture says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Why? Because of love. He loved us. Remember, as I said, he is the creator. He didn't have to do it. He could have started all over again. He's God. But no, he, 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 God had a plan. He wanted to redeem man. And because of his love, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and me. Because of love. 
so that's our foundation. That's what we're going to build on. Is that scripture again? Um, our main scripture, Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. Jesus replied to him, "You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, and with all of your soul, and with all of your mind." Again, this is a command. But it's okay because we know that the one who commanded us to do it loves us with an everlasting love. There's also a scripture that says that we love him because he loved us. See? He first loved us. He first loved us. And um, love is, is, a, is a very, God's love is a very special thing it's very deep that I don't think any of us have really fathomed the love of God how much God loved his creation love his people love us you and I I think so so um, as we go into this um, take heart it's fine that this commandment is not grievous when Jesus said the greatest commandment is that you love God. You love God. And we're going to see um, in the next coming weeks, uh, this is what we're going to be talking about, us loving God. So that at the end of the series, this is my prayer, at the end of the series, that if our love for God was here, at the end it's going to be up here. I mean, God wants us to be so in love with him that, you know, if you wake up at night and you feel like you can't sleep, think about him. You love him so much. And you know, when you love someone, you want to please them. You want to please them. You, you know, you do things. You don't want to hurt that person because if that person loves you. Especially if that person did something for you. For, especially that person saved your life. That person saved your life. And, and you didn't deserve it. You feel so indebted to that person. Maybe you had talked about that person before. Maybe you couldn't stand that person. Maybe some things that were said about that individual... He said, I can't stand him. But then you were at a place where you almost died. You were about to die. And this person that you didn't like came in and saved your life. And then you started talking to that person. You began to realize, hey, this person is not what I've been hearing about. This person is good. This person is kind. This person is so gentle. That's really God. It's the enemy, it's the devil that has lied to mankind so that their perspective on God for the, is, for the most part is not true. The enemy is the one that has sowed those seeds uh, you know, so that we won't see how good God is and that is love. Oh, his wonderful love for us. In, it's in fact, you, you, you can't measure. You cannot measure the love of God. So, we're going to end right here. It's short. But I, I, this is just, this is the introduction. And, um, Get ready as we dive into this and starting next week. We're going to be really getting into what it is to love God. You and I, Lord, I love you. So it's just not when we say to Him, it's not just words. When we say, Lord, I love you, but it will come with such a passion, 
such a joy bubbling up because you were like, man, this, I, I love that. I love him. With all my heart, Lord, I love you. Praise the Lord. All right, so be ready. Next week, in Jesus' name, God bless you.